friends, and uh, welcome to another WSIB Truth Matters with Joe Machado on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. I hope uh, you're enjoying the day so far. Anyway, a uh, quick uh, video. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my 50, uh, 50th video coming up tomorrow. Uh, and the topic of that video is going to be uh, why I believe that the uh, WSIB appeals branch should cease to exist. I'm going to bring you some facts and figures. And all of this is based on my years of experience of over 30 years of dealing with the WSIB at all levels. Uh, operations, appeals branch, decision review branch when they had that one as well. Uh, and of course, the Workplace Safety and Insurance Appeal Australia. You know. So I'm going to talk extensively about that tomorrow. But a couple of days ago when I announced uh, uh, my 50th uh, video coming up, I indicated each day I would tell you a little bit about where I thought the WSIB started to uh, stick their hands in your pocket and uh, take advantage. And so yesterday I talked about the appeal, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, CBP uh, offset of benefits for those who were approved for Canada Pension Disability and had the WSIB deduct those benefits from what they would otherwise be paying and should be paying. So if you didn't have a chance to look at that video, you may want to have a look at it uh, when you do have a chance. Uh, and we are considering uh, bringing that under our um, class action lawsuit that we are undertaking uh, with respect to the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board and their deeming practices. The warm brings about the thirst. It's water. Cocktails will be a little bit later. Um, so in that vein, I wanted to tell you what I think about appeal time limits, which was the, the most aggressive um, step that the WSIB has taken yet uh, to screw injured workers even more out of their benefits. So um, when appeal time limit uh, legislation was enacted, there's a lot of apprehension about it, including my firm and many other uh, law firms or paralegal firms, unions and um, other injured worker support group organizations, and all for good reason. Um, you know, I think that the, the fear at that time was that uh, it was a way to um, further take advantage of injured workers and their lack of knowledge in the law. And uh, they weren't off the mark. That's exactly what they've done. And uh, I believe that uh, the motivation behind appeal time limits was purely financial. It was a very nefarious um, position to take and what uh, became of that. I know that a lot of injured workers just quit, gave up, and a lot of them went back to work injured, and a lot didn't have the finances to uh, fight it, didn't know where to get help. Uh, you gotta remember, I mean, uh, you know, we're dealing with um, individuals that aren't versed in the law, you know. They, they go to work each day and put in their time and uh, hope to make a living to support their families. And, you know, they're not up to date on the laws. And so all of a sudden, you've got uh, six months to appeal a decision. Uh, I understand some of the reasoning behind it. I'm not entirely uh, against it. Um, you have to be able to have a cutoff at some point. And... It allows the organization to be able to project what their financial exposure is. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think that, that it should have been done. And I certainly don't think it should have been done in the way that they handled it. In fact, you know, a lot of injured workers who would have otherwise appealed, uh, a lot of them had their benefits either cut off or their claims denied. And the WSIB had this information. They knew that the person would likely have a lack of finances and funding. Um, 
and probably wouldn't be able to hire somebody or a professional to deal with it. That's, that's a conflict. They knew they had an advantage. Um, and yet they, uh, you know, pressed on. But the biggest one for me was if you're imposing a six month appeal time limit on all decisions relating to entitlement in 30 days in decisions relating to return to work, labor market reentry related matters, then what's fair is fair. So why didn't the board and the appeals branch impose similar uh, conditions on themselves? For example, being able to provide the ability for an appellant to have a hearing within a certain time frame, a month, two months. And if you can't do it, then the decision, the issue that the appellant was appealing should be rendered in favor of the appellant because you failed to meet your deadline. In the same way that if a, an injured worker doesn't meet his or her deadline to appeal, they lose their right to appeal. So why wouldn't the same conditions apply to the WSIB? This bullshit. Which the demands, the expectations of injured workers are so high and yet you're not prepared to do fuck all to hold yourselves accountable. Is that fair? It's bullshit. And this leads into my conversation for tomorrow about why the WSIB's appeals branch should cease to exist. And if you're watching this video, which I know some of you are, and I, I wouldn't blame you for that. Take the message back to the clowns that, you know what, we're coming for you. We're going to hold you accountable in the courts for all the bullshit, all the hack that you've been causing in people's lives in the last 30 years, offsetting CBP benefits. You have no right to do it. And offsetting from the deeming practices, offsetting CBP from the FEL and the LOE benefits to further shrink the minimal, minimal, minimal amounts you're already paying. So you continue to do this kind of shit to push people down. And no wonder some viewers respond and make comments that, you know, they don't think that the WSIB can be held accountable because, you know, it's easy to become discouraged and frustrated and to want to give up. It's easy. And I know that you guys always count on that. You always count on people giving up. But I'm telling you right now, as I'm sitting here, there is no giving up this time. You better sharpen your pencils and get your shit together because we're coming for you. We're going to take you to court. We're going to hold you accountable to the same standard that you demand of others. All right, friends. So anyway, that's what's going to happen uh, today. But uh, tomorrow we're going to have uh, a meeting about getting rid of that Peels branch and be, be ready for this one. Because it's going to be interesting. Trust me. You're going to hear some things that you haven't heard before or seen. I'm pretty certain. But in my true nature, I'm going to put it out there. So you can have the facts for yourself and judge for yourself. Um, because it is going to be my 50th video in a little over two months. And believe me, I'm going to continue at this pace for as long as necessary, because I have lots of content to hold these people accountable 
from the bottom level right up to the top. So one giveaway is going to be a $50 uh, gift card. And there's going to be five uh, $5 Tim Hortons cards. So the theme is five and 50. Uh, there's going to be five one-year memberships uh, for those uh, for the one the the fifty dollar winner is going to get a, a one year membership in wsibsettlements.com. Each of the five dollar uh, Tim Hortons gift card is also going to get a one year membership um, in wsibsettlements.com, which is worth two hundred and fifteen dollars. And um, and there's going to be five in addition to that five one year uh, memberships in wsibsettlements.com. Um, that's my company. We provide uh, amazing tools to help injured workers manage their claims and address every issue that the WSIB can throw at them. Uh, there is another feature that we will be adding to our app that's going to be a game changer for our uh, members and others who join. Game changer, for sure. Uh, that's probably going to be announced on Friday, if not Friday, likely Monday. So that's what's happening in terms of uh, giveaways. And the way to qualify is very easy. Watch the video. I'm going to make reference to the number 50 on a number of occasions. It could be included in a policy that I uh, refer to in terms of uh, WSIB policy. It can be in a, in a workplace safety and insurance appeals tribunal decision that I reference. Uh, but anyway, um, if you watch the video and you make note of that and you in the comments, you make a comment to when I made that reference, um, the, uh, the giveaways are going to be given in the order of the person who uh, comment. And make sure that you leave your email address or a phone number so I can contact you to get your, uh, uh, to get your, your uh, prizes to you. All right? And um, I'm looking forward to on the road to 100, uh, just about 70 uh, uh, subscribers, uh, which is exciting, far more than I expected in such a short period of time. Um, and I want to I want to keep doing this to help you as much as I can navigate the water the the sharky waters that is the workplace safety and insurance um, workplace safety and insurance board. All right, friends. So anyway, I'm going to check out on this one, and uh, by all means, uh, subscribe to my channel, um, share it with others. It's free, uh, and it just helps me to grow the channel and to get in touch with as many injured workers as I can. Um, so that they can find out about the class action lawsuit that we're doing and also uh, tune into my videos and maybe get something there that could help. Uh, I've already helped a lot of people that have emailed me and we're back and forth and uh, it's just amazing. I'm having a great time doing it. So anyway, friends, have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.